So hello, good day, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Father Travis Mirheim, and I'm the vocation director for the Diocese of Prince Albert. We have a vocations commission in our diocese, and so today joining me is uh, Sister Evelyn from the Sisters of Presentation of Mary. Uh, so welcome, Sister Evelyn. Thanks for joining today. You're welcome. Uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and why are you on the Vocations Commission? Um, I Basically for the Vocation Commission, I was asked if I would be part of it, but I also find that making a vocational choice is an important um, time in somebody's life and I found when I was discerning my vocation, whatever I could find on vocations and programs or information was helpful for me. So how long have you been um, with the Sisters of Presentation? Um, almost 30 years. I'm 29 in holding right now. <laughs> um, uh, I'm a registered nurse and I work at Pineview Terrace here in Prince Albert. And uh, like I just told you, I just moved to a new apartment. Um, we're looking at trying to sell our big house, so that's that's kind of the reason why. How long have you been uh, an RN? That's excellent. Since 1981, Beautiful. before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> Only by one year. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, good, good, good. And uh, yeah, so vocations is um, very important, uh, not just for our diocese, not just because, you know, we want sisters and want priests and stuff like that, but because as well, it uh, calls out of us who we are in the eyes of God. You know, it's listening to that voice of the, of the Good Shepherd. And so uh, we're excited to have you on the Vocations Commission as well. Um, one of the things I, I learned is that you did the uh, pilgrimage. Uh, I don't even know how to say it properly, so I'll maybe let you take that. Uh, but the pilgrimage to uh, the Camino de Santiago or something like that in Spain? Yeah. Uh, how, yeah do you, the, how do you say it properly? The Camino to Santiago or um, Saint Jacques de Compostelle is the French way of saying it, and I'm not sure the Spanish way of saying it, Camino Compostela, um, Saint Jacques, I think that's what it is. <laughs> I'll have to watch the Martin Sheen movie again, maybe that'll remind me. Mm -hmm. So when did you go on this pilgrimage? I went in 2018. And we went to group of us. There was Father Jim and another couple and another single lady that came with us. So we were five of us. And we went in August, which is probably the hottest time of the summer over there. But um, we were there for three weeks, the first three weeks of August. So what made you decide to go? You just wanted to stretch your legs or? <laughs> um, when I I was in France um, in 96. I, um, I was with a sister that was on the formation team and she talked about it. She had actually done parts of it. And so every year she had started in France and every summer she would do um, a week or two of the Camino towards Saint Jacques de Compostelle. And so um, that's when I first heard about it and I was interested in it. And I thought, oh, if I ever had a chance, I would like to do that. But I thought as a sister, I would never have the opportunity or it would never work out that I could take three weeks off to leave the country. <laughs> but I got the okay for it and it went ahead. Excellent, God provides, doesn't he? Yeah. So what did you experience, I suppose, is the best way to ask that? What was your experience of this pilgrimage? Like, what do you do? And Well, basically, you hike all day, you rest, you sleep at night, 
<laughs> you walk again the next day. So it is a lot of walking. But um, I don't know. I just think of it as praying as you walk. And as far as doing the physical journey of walking, you're also doing a spiritual inner journey as well. And it's the experience of going on the path that many people have gone before because with this Camino, there's thousands that have made that Camino. I think there's thousands per year that do it. So over the last, I don't know how many years, there there would be a lot of people that have done it. So you sense the presence of other people. And then you meet people from all different countries that are doing Camino with. So, so that's really neat. Um, to find out different people's reasons for doing it and why they're coming on the Camino. Um, what it made me think of was the same way that we're on a pilgrimage to go to Santiago. Um, it's kind of like life. Life, you're on a journey and you walk from day to day and you encounter people from all over. You are headed for a sacred place or a holy place or in life you're headed towards God. And so it, it's just that whole sense of journeying and um, interiorly searching for God. And on the trail, there's, there's arrows everywhere. So you follow the arrow and it shows you the route where to go. So as you as you walk, you look for the arrows to, to make sure you go the right direction. But it reminds me of life, the people you meet and the events that happen to you, the places you go, how all of those influence our vocational choice and where we're going. And so um, it was just a reminder for me of that. And uh, yeah. Just follow the arrow and you'll get there. But uh, the other thing that was important was um, there's places where they call it auberge. It's like uh, hotels for the pilgrims. So it's at a cheaper rate, but you need a passport to, to stay there. And they, they stamp your passport at each place that you go. So with that passport, it gives you the ability to stay in those places, but we don't. We didn't have them booked ahead. You just go and see how far you walk, and you find a town, and you find a place to stay. And it's just a sense of God providing and finding you the places to eat, the places to sleep, the places to rest and have a snack. Um, it's all part of just trusting God on the journey. Was that difficult for you? Are you more of a type personality that needs everything planned out in your life? Or did you find that uh, easier? I was expecting it, so I didn't find it that hard. Um, the last couple of days, just before we got to St. Jack de Compostelle, um, we did book a couple places because to get a certificate for having walked the Camino, you need to do it at least 100 kilometers. So once we got to that 100 kilometer mark, there was a lot more people on the trail. So to make sure that we wouldn't be caught without a place to stay, we did book there at the end. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, God doesn't want us to abandon our brains either when we trust <laughs> in him, hey? And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it's a good balance, I suppose. Oh, that's that's neat. Um, so have you found that your life changed at all when after you came back from a pilgrimage like that, a big pilgrimage? Or it was just a deeper understanding maybe? or A deeper understanding, but it kind of, it helps you to simplify life a lot because as you journey and go on the Camino, um, everything you have is on your back. So whatever you need for those three weeks, you're carrying it. So um, you learn to do without too many things and you've got your couple changes of clothing and your your few essentials that you need and the rest you do without. So 
you get to realize how little you can do with. I don't want to get too personal here, but is there something that you really, really missed in those three weeks that you, as soon as you could have it again? No, not really. Everything was pretty, I had what I needed and there wasn't anything even food wise that I was really craving. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the Spanish food and, uh, it was a new experience discovering new menus and they often had a special menu especially for the pilgrimages so when we would stop at night for our big meal um, they'd be specials just for the pilgrim yeah i think that's one thing um when i talk to young people or even uh, young adults i should say is they're scared of is the with vocations or the religious vocation they're afraid of what they're going to lose they're afraid of losing a family they're they're afraid that they won't be happy mm -hmm. when they choose because they won't have these material things or even these family things to make them happy um but i think the camino shows that you know god provides uh, mm -hmm. in our lives, that which makes us happy, you know, he gives us the, the yeah. joy in our lives. I think if you think of what you gain, I know when I entered, um, like people ask me, did I miss being independent? Did I miss my car? And like the sisters had cars, I was able to use another car, I had a place to stay. Um, I thought of what I gained in answering the call. I, I wanted to belong to Jesus and to follow him and it's like everything else was secondary after so it I didn't find it challenging when I entered religious life to let go of those things. So what do you think then, I mean I think we've answered a bit of this already but what can the Camino teach us about our vocation or religious life? Um, trust in God, hey? Yeah. Follow the arrows? What was that? Follow the arrows? Yeah, follow the arrows. <laughs> so do, um, you have, do you have some arrows in your life that uh, you followed that led you to the religious life or to even to nursing? Uh, yeah, when I was looking at what to do um, after I was done school, I wasn't sure, but I had met with a lady that was a nurse, and I told her that I was thinking of being an LPN, and she said, oh, you won't be happy doing that. You, you need to be an RN, so then I started looking into being an RN. Um, as far as religious life, when I was nursing and out on my own, I was kind of looking for a retreat or something to help me with my discernment. And that's when I found out about the discernment house in Saskatoon. So that was a live-in program where you could actually stay there. And there was somebody that was a spiritual director that journeyed with you. And that was kind of how I discerned my vocation was through that year. Oh, excellent. Uh, now here's the question that everybody these days is talking about um, is our current pandemic situation and just the change of our own lifestyle the change of uh, how we do church and how we interact with each other and how we pray i don't know if this is forcing anything too much but have you did you learn anything from the camino that is helping you live in these strange pandemic especially working in the healthcare system Mm -hmm. uh, what did I learn about the Camino in relation to COVID? <laughs> um, I would think a big thing is just to trust. And I think the same way in the Camino that you're journeying with a lot of other people, um, right now in this world, everybody's at risk of getting it and everybody has to be aware of being careful and social distancing and that. So I think 
I think the fact that when you're on the Camino that you know thousands have gone before you and thousands will go after you, it's knowing that these challenges in our times, there's been other challenges in our world before, but it's going day by day and knowing that God will provide for what we need. Well, excellent. Uh, I've done a couple of videos now as well with uh, Father Jim Capdine, who was the outgoing vocation director, and he's still on our vocation commission. So I've invited him to do a couple of videos. Uh, and he's gotten like, this is his first time on YouTube. So he was pretty excited. And uh, mm -hmm. he's gotten a lot of views. So we're going to see if we can beat his uh, amount of views on YouTube. Um, so that he yeah. has to try again. And so, so is there anything else you'd want to say to our viewers and listeners today um, so that we can try to beat Father Jim and how many people watch this video? <laughs> I don't know if we'll be able to do that. He works in different parishes, so that makes a lot of difference. I'm kind of in a hidden, a hidden vocation and career, so... Um, I think life is just an exciting journey and what I would what I would challenge the viewers is to ask them to contact us and tell us what is it that they need that would help them on their journey what kind of things would help them what kind of things are they looking for so that people that are discerning a vocation which is everybody um, where to start how how to go about it um, whatever way we could help, I would be interested in hearing about that. Okay. Uh, I think just to help them walk their path, make their choice, and then to live it out. Okay. Well, excellent. If you're looking for, uh, in the short term, any more vocational resources, you can check out the um, Sisters of the Presentation of Mary's website. Uh, it's um, presentationofmary.ca, and they've got a little vocation section. But uh, yeah, like uh, Sister Evelyn said, if there's any more, uh, it, well, there, there is some tools out there, but if, it's nice to know what you guys are, you all, you viewers and listeners are looking for to help uh, to help you out. So if you uh, give, could give us suggestions, that would be wonderful. And we could help uh, point you in the right direction for resources. Or if you want to talk to us, you can email us as well at vocations uh, at padiocese.ca. And I'll put all the, this information in the YouTube show notes. So you can just check the uh, the uh, the details section and you'll have all the links in there and you can just click on it and follow that as well. And so vocations at padiocese.ca and uh, if you have any questions for that and then uh, the website vocations.ca as well has some good vocational resources as well. I know for, for men um, the book To Save a Thousand Souls is a, a great uh, resource for men who are discerning the priesthood. And it gives kind of um, tips and tricks and what to look for. But I think, Sister Evelyn, I think thank you very much for your, those are pretty good tips and tricks, you know, to look for that, um, look for those arrows. I like that. Look for those mm -hmm. arrows in our life. God puts people in our life for a reason. And, uh, and we need to, to be grateful and learn to, to ask the Holy Spirit for the gifts of knowledge and wisdom and understanding that we may not take for granted all of the beauty that God puts in our life, especially like when we can be out walking in, in nature like that. It's a, such a wonderful opportunity. Um, so I was going to ask, however, I don't think we people can really go on big pilgrimages this summer. Like I know our diocese is not going to do the July pilgrimage, at least to Saint Laurent. So do you have any recommendations? Like how, how should people do a pilgrimage this summer, a spiritual pilgrimage or... What do you think? Um, I think there's a lot of ways to make a pilgrimage. And I know in some of what I read, it says you can learn to make a pilgrimage just in your rocking chair, that you can make that interior journey and be moving, but staying still at the same time. So I think it's like when you're walking, um, you're going somewhere, but 
they suggest even things like going to visit your cathedral, going to visit a shrine, um, going to visit family roots, all right, connection with your family and your history. So there's lots of different ways to make a pilgrimage that it doesn't mean leaving the country and going away for two, three weeks. Okay, that's a, those are wonderful suggestions. This is why I called you and got you on video. So, uh, <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much for your time. That's uh, all the time we're going to take today. Uh, so again, just send us your, if you have any questions for either myself or uh, Sister Evelyn, uh, please don't hesitate to put it in the comments or send us a, an email or whichever way is easier for you. Sister Evelyn, thank you so much for your time and uh, be assured, uh, especially as a nurse, that you're always in our prayers as one of the frontline workers. So uh, thanks for all you do and uh, God bless and have a wonderful day. Okay, thank you very much.